Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so nice of you guys. Thank you. I recently moved to Los Angeles, and you know, a big issue here and everywhere in the country right now is gay rights. And I was walking down the street once, and this guy came up to me with a clipboard. He goes, "Hey man, do you have a moment for gay rights?" And I went, "Sorry man, I'm in a little bit of a rush." And then that dude watched me walk into a Jamba Juice. <laughs> And he was a little upset. He was like, really, man? You're in a rush to get the Jamba Juice? I'm out here trying to make a difference. And I was like, well, actually, man, there's a guy that works in that Jamba Juice that said some really hateful stuff about a close gay friend of mine. And I'm going in there to stab him. <laughs> and then I pulled out two knives and I tossed him one. I was like, do you have a moment for gay rights? <laughs> oh, didn't think so. So sit there with your little clipboard and judge me. I kill for gay people. I make a difference. You don't do shit. I actually had a gay friend of mine get real mad at me because of a text message I sent him. And I looked at my phone, I realized it wasn't my fault, it was my phone's fault. They had that feature on there called Smart Type, where you type things and it guesses what you're typing. But sometimes it guesses wrong. Like you'll type in gay, it'll guess half. Text get misinterpreted, that's what happened to me. What I was trying to send my gay friend Greg was a text that said, Hey Greg, don't think I can come to the bar, tired, gonna hit the hey. That's what I was trying to send. But what Smart Type decided to send was, Hey, Greg, don't think I can come to the bar. Tired, gonna hit the hay, you faggot. Fuck you. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Smart Type, that ain't what I was trying to say. Why get the homophobic on me? Greg's gonna get pissed off about that text. <laughs> now, my whole take on, you know, the gay rights issues, particularly gay marriage, is, let's be honest, if you're against gay marriage, you just don't like gay people, and you want to stick it to them. And I'm not saying I wouldn't do the same thing if I was presented with similar opportunities. Like, if there was a law up for debate where I was like, hey, man, do you think guys that wear tight T-shirts and get bottle service at nightclubs should be allowed to own property? I'd be like, no, fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it violates the sanctity of owning property, and it says in the Bible they're douchebags. Whatever I need to say so you don't think this is coming from purely a place of hate. I was getting some sheets down at Bed Bath & Beyond. Man, they got so many sheets. <laughs> I was looking around, and I saw this guy, and, and he didn't know what to buy, and he looked all confused, and he looks over at me and goes, man, this is why I need a girlfriend. <laughs> and I was like, really? This is why you need a girlfriend? <laughs> so if you had a girlfriend, you wouldn't even be here. You'd be back at your house sitting on a lazy boy, drinking a beer, going, bitch, go get me some sheets. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a relationship now. I don't have to buy my own domestic goods. Pick up one of those bottles we can put sticks in and make the room smell like vanilla bean. I've been farting all day. It smells like shit in here. Now, all I know about sheets is the higher the thread count, the better the sheet, right? This lady's like, right? Yeah, I got 700 back in my house. It's like sleeping in lotion. So I'm looking around trying to find some nice sheets. I see this brand called Hotel Luxury Linens. 600 thread count. And it sounds fancy too, right? You got a girl back at your place. She's like, oh my God. Did we just teleport to a five-star hotel? <laughs> nah, baby, these are just hotel luxury linens. By the way, the technology for teleportation doesn't exist yet. You must be kind of stupid. <laughs> so I grab the sheets and I get them home and I'm psyched to put them on my bed, right? And I feel them and they feel a little rough to the touch. I get a little suspicious. I do a little Googling. I find an investigative report in Southern Living Magazine where they investigated threat count claims, an issue that definitely needed delving into. <laughs> and they had a little chart. They said, brand, advertised threat count, actual threat count. So it's like, brand, warm suitor, advertised 500, actual 497. Brand, soft sheets, advertised 600, actual 600. Brand, hotel luxury linens, advertised 600, actual 296. <laughs> Are you shitting me, man? Almost slept on that shit. 296 is sandpaper as far as I'm concerned. If that was a drug deal, I would have shot Hotel Luxury Linens in the face. Where is my thread? You don't think I was going to count that shit, motherfucker? <laughs> I was down at CVS. I had a rather odd assortment of items I needed to get. I had to get... A liter of Jack Daniels, 
a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola, a box of condoms, and a 10 pack of blank CDR discs. And I thought it'd be awesome if every morning I went and bought those same four things for like six months, just to develop this really weird reputation with the staff there, where they'd be like, hold on a second, man. This guy drinks a liter of Jack and Coke every day, has sex 12 times a day, and then burns 10 blank CDs, 10 blank CDs, 10 discs, that's like 7.5 gigs a day. What kind of debt is he backing up? Would it make more sense just to get an external hard drive at this point? Is he burning music? Would it make more sense just to get an iPod? Maybe he's making mixed CDs for all these girls that he's fucking. Two of those girls ain't getting CDs though. Which two of those? Which two don't get the CDs? I gotta travel a lot when I'm doing stand-up, and uh, I was on a flight one time, and I had a little bit of a runny nose. And so I went like this. All of a sudden, the guy next to me goes, hey man, you gonna blow your nose, or am I gonna have to listen to you have the sniffles for six fucking hours? And I was stunned for two reasons. One, I couldn't believe he'd be so rude to a total stranger, and two, I'd never heard the word sniffles and fucking in the same sentence together before. <laughs> If you use Craigslist. <laughs> Hold on a second, though. I'm not talking about like, oh, hey, I'm looking for an apartment Craigslist. I'm talking about, give me a hand job, I'll give you my coffee table. <laughs> like that kind of Craigslist. That's Craigslist. <laughs> I saw a post like that once where this guy was trying to sell concert tickets. And this is what he posted up there. He goes, willing to give up two tickets for the sold out show tonight. Must be female, age 20 to 25, and be willing to perform oral sex for a half hour. In my car, must remove shirt and bra, your friend can be there for security. <laughs> now that guy's insane, and you can tell because he put that phrase in there, must remove shirt and bra, because that implies he's done this in the past, and the girl was like, hold on, you didn't say nothing about my shirt and bra coming off. He's like, damn, I gotta remember to put that in the ad next time. I wanna see some titties. <laughs> and then he acts like he's throwing you a bone by putting that phrase in there, your friend can be there for security. Really? Well, that's gonna be a tough favor to ask for. Hey, Denise. Yeah, it's me, Carol. Let me ask you something. You ever done any security work before? Well, it's nothing too crazy, but I'm gonna be blowing this guy for a half hour in his car, and I just need you to sit in the back seat and make sure he doesn't do anything sketchy. By the way, you mind holding my shirt and bra? Those will be off. Now, I went to that concert, I got tickets in advance, and I got there, and you know what I saw? They were selling extra tickets at the door! <laughs> selling extra tickets at the door! Could you imagine blowing a guy for a half hour for sold out concert tickets and then finding out they're selling them at the door? That'd be like blowing a guy for a half hour for sold out concert tickets and then finding out they're selling them at the door. <laughs> There's no other way to complete that analogy because that's the shittiest thing that could ever happen to you. One thing that scares me about like Craigslist and stuff is like people go on there and they find random roommates. That's a terrifying proposition to me. Like the one time I had a random roommate, it did not go well. Like I would come in the room and it always smelled like tuna. And I'd be like, whoa, not my top five smells for the room to have. Why does it always smell like tuna? And it's because this guy likes to eat cans of Starkest tuna all the time. And you know when the juice is there at the bottom when you're finished? He'd shoot the juice back like a tequila shot. Yes, I agree, it's disgusting. If you'd approach me on the street, like, hey, Zeke, what's the most disgusting thing you can catch a new roommate doing? I'd be like, drinking the tuna juice at the bottom of the Starkest tuna can. I'd be like, man, that's a really specific answer. There's other things, like, he played the flute all the time. Nothing wrong with playing the flute, but he'd only play one song on the flute. Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, the theme song to Titanic. If you'd approach me on the street, like, hey, Zeke, what's the most annoying song a dude could play on the flute all the time? I'd be like, Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, the theme song of Titanic. And you'd be like, God damn, you're really good at this game. <laughs> but the craziest thing was towards the end of our time together, he was acting really weird. And I don't know what's going on. So I asked a friend of his, I said, hey man, what's up with this guy? And he goes, oh, he thinks he's possessed by Scar, the evil lion from the Lion King movies. <laughs> oh, yes, that happened, sure. If you'd approach me on the street like, hey, Zeke, what's the most random Disney villain the kid could think he's possessed by? I'd be like, Scar, the evil lion from the Lion King movies. And you'd be like, ah, sorry, it's actually the hockey team from Iceland and the Mighty Ducks too. 
Now, I have a small update on that joke. I was looking around on the internet one day, and I saw this blog had written about me. I looked in the comments thread, and some guy had written, I live with this guy. He's a douchebag. It was that fucking guy. Oh, really? I'm a douchebag, huh? Well, you don't tell all these people about how you did tuna juice shots all day. Oh, you don't talk about that. You just say, I'm a douchebag. Well, if I'm a douchebag, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out where that guy lives, right? And go outside his house, like outside his window, real late at night, right? And wait till it's like really late. I'm just gonna go. And he'd be like, no, the demons, their backs, go, get away from me, leave me alone. What I should have done was just went on the comments thread under the username hyenas and wrote, watch out, motherfucker. <laughs> I used to live in New York and I love living there because you can walk around everywhere. And, you know, when I walk around, sometimes people recognize me from things they see me on TV or whatever, and they'd say, you know, stuff. And a lot of times I wouldn't hear what they said because I'd have headphones on. So I'd kind of just go, cool, man, glad you like the show. And I just keep walking. And this one guy said something to me one time, and I went, cool, man, glad you like the show. And then right when I walked past him, I realized, oh, man, that guy didn't say anything about the show. He went, hey, man, your fly's down. And I went, cool, man, glad you like the show. Glad you like seeing my dick pop out of my pants. Come back next week, you can see one of my balls. I went to a cool show in New York once called Walking with Dinosaurs. And it was this thing where they had these like animatronic dinosaurs that would like walk around. It was really cool. But I was the only person there really in my age group. It was mostly like little kids and their parents. And I was bored waiting for the show to start, so I started talking to this little kid next to me. And it was pretty cool because I mean like 18 years old. We had a lot in common though, you know? Like we both played Call of Duty 4 on the Xbox. We were uh, both really had similar theories about what was really going on on Lost. And he was just a cool kid. And eventually his dad was like, hey, Brian, I gotta make a couple of phone calls. You think you'll be all right here talking to your new friend? He's like, okay, dad. And the dad leaves for like a really long time. And you know, I'm not a child molester at all. But if I was, I'd have been like, somebody's doing some molesting tonight. Let's do this shit, Brian. Your dad doesn't give a fuck about you. He left you alone with a grown man with a full beard and walking with dinosaurs. Clearly I'm out here scouting and you are my man. I'm just saying, I could have fucked that kid. <laughs> I'm originally from South Carolina, and thank you. And um, my brother sent me something that really reminded me of how crazy it is down there. It was a promo video for this thing called the Simple Man Cruise. And this is this cruise ship where they get all these southern rock bands, like 38 Special. The Marshall Tucker Band, Leonard Skinner, and they throw him on a boat, all these rednecks get on board, they set out to sea, and it's scary as shit! Because I've never seen rednecks like this before. I lived in South Carolina for 18 years, never saw people like this. This one dude gets on the screen, he's like, oh hell man, you can swing a dead cat around here, you bound to hit a good guitar player. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I don't know, but I like the way this guy talks. I want him to review everything for me in my life. like. When I need an opinion, I'll go to him. I'll be like, hey, man, I was just out buying some CDs at that music store down on, like, Sunset. Is that a good place to buy music? Oh, hell, man, you can go in there and sling a pot of cream corn. Someone was bound to land on some great new and used CDs. You might get a little corn on your CDs, but that's easy to clean off, especially if you have a biscuit. <laughs> okay, man. I was thinking about buying a Prius. Is that a good car to get? Oh, man, here's what you need to do. Run down to the woods, find two dead possums, pick them up, turn them into puppets, be like, hey, man, I see my buy a priest. Is that a good car to get? I don't know nothing about cards. I'm just a possum. Yeah, that's your question. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, I see I buy an LCD TV. Is it a good time to buy an LCD TV? Here's what you need to do, man. Go to down to that electronic store in La Brea. Jerk off in 12 biscuits, sling them around. One of them's bound to hit a great LCD TV. You might catch a little hell for what you did to those biscuits, but you're going to get a great deal. How many of you guys clap if you still haven't seen The Dark Knight yet? You still haven't seen The Dark Knight clap. What the fuck is wrong with you people? That movie's incredible! My favorite review of that movie is from my little cousin Harris that's 14 years old and lives in Georgia. And I love Harris because he has really odd choices in entertainment. Like his favorite TV shows are hour-long dramas on USA and TNT. Like, you know how you see billboards or shows like Burn Notice. You're like, who the heck watches Burn Notice? Harris watches Burn Notice. He loves it. 
Harris told me his senior quote's gonna be, TNT knows drama. <laughs> you call up Harris and he's like, hey Harris, what's going on? I'm pissed off, man. My dad just erased all my shows from the DVR. Guess I won't find out what happened on Las Vegas this week. <laughs> Who DVRs Las Vegas? Josh Duvall doesn't DVR Las Vegas. And you don't get that joke because Josh Duvall's a star of Las Vegas and nobody watches Las Vegas. So I asked Harris, I'm like, hey Harris, you like the Dark Knight? Yeah. Is it better than Burn Notice? Yeah. Is it better than Las Vegas? Yeah. Is it better than eating at Cinnabon? No. <laughs> and I knew that would get him because he's a little chubby guy. He loves shoving Cinnabons into his little chubby face. <laughs> and I love that about him. I love that he's chubby. Because there's not a lot of chubby little Indian kids. Most of them are small and skinny like me, but every now and then you see a chubby one. And it's awesome. It's kind of like seeing a shooting star, only it's fat, brown, and on the ground. <laughs> I found Harris to be most entertaining to me when he's really angry at me. And I found the quickest way to get him angry is to fuck with him on Facebook. <laughs> he does not like it. He's got his little updates meticulously planned, like, Harris just became a big fan of Will Smith. And I'm right up there, fuck Will Smith. <laughs> And he'll be like, why'd you do that? <laughs> and so one time I noticed he was posting a lot on a study group for his world history class. And I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll join the study group. I'll write all this dumb shit on there. Harris will get really pissed and it'll be awesome. And that's exactly how that shit went down. <laughs> as soon as I started posting, I started getting all these like angry IMs from Harris. He's like, hey man, you need to get off the boards. And I was like, why? He's like, the admins are getting on my case. <laughs> And he posts this conversation he had with the admin where the admin's like, hey Harris, who's Aziz? He's like, my cousin. Why do you ask? He goes, he's posting on AP World Wall. Do you know what period he has AP World? And Harris writes in all caps, no, you gotta boot him now! With like 30 O's, 30 W's, and 50 exclamation points. And other people are starting to get suspicious of my presence on the board as well. Maybe because I'm supposed to be in the ninth grade and I have a full beard. But I'm trying to act like I belong, right? And I'm in the class and I know what's up. So there was like a controversy about this one quiz question. I was like, I don't know what I'll do. I'll go independently do some research and I'll post my findings on the board. They'll think I'm smart and that I belong in the class. So the next post I wrote was, guys, I've been doing some research. I think the views on salvation in Buddhism and Christianity are far from similar. In Buddhism, salvation is something one can only achieve through the Noble Eightfold Path, whereas in Christianity, salvation is given to all those who accept Jesus Christ as their savior. Quote, for whom service shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. I hate to say it, guys, but our teacher, Mr. Edelstein, is right. BAM! <laughs> and then I waited like two minutes, and then I wrote this. Guys, I just got an email from Mr. Edelstein. He read what I wrote here and gave me an extra point on the quiz. <laughs> he said I showed initiative and critical thinking skills. What a cool guy. <laughs> and then this kid replied, what? <laughs> and then at this point, Harris got fucking furious. He's like, I don't know if you should have wrote that last ball post disease. And I was like, why? He goes, what do people go in tomorrow and say, hey, Edelstein, I heard you gave disease an extra point on the quiz. Can I get an extra point back too? Because I put the same thing he did. And he'll be like, I don't teach you disease. That person doesn't exist. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you, Harris. I do exist. <laughs> and then he starts attacking me publicly on the boards. He writes in all caps, Aziz, get out of this group. With like a bunch of exclamation points. And then emoticons are like, ah, 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 ah. And I was like, what's that supposed to be, Harris? You eating cinnamon all day? And then I start mounting my offensive. I start poking him like crazy. I start sending him vampire requests, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what's going on. And then he writes up there and goes, hey, everyone, if I were you, I wouldn't go to Edelstein and ask for points back on that question. I'm positive you won't get the points back. And I write, no, guys, I just talked to Edelstein again. You'll definitely get the points back. Just mention my name and the fact that I exist. <laughs> fuck you, Harris. And then... And then this kid writes, you're not even in this class. You're the guy from that TV show. And some other kid writes, what TV show are you on? And I write, Gossip Girl. <laughs> and then I got kicked the fuck out. Um, I do this, do this TV show right now. And, you know, when you promote a TV show you're on, you got to do a lot of interviews and stuff. And um, I was doing an interview once, and this guy goes, uh, so, uh, you must be pretty psyched by all this Slumdog Millionaire stuff. <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah, I am. I have no idea why, though. I had nothing to do with that movie. It's just some people that kind of look like me are in this movie that everyone loves and winning Oscars and stuff. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
are white people just psyched all the time? It's like, Back to the Future, that's us. Godfather, that's us. Godfather Part 2, that's us. Departed, that's us. Sunset Boulevard, that's us. Citizen Kane, that's us. Jaws, that's us. Every fucking movie but Slumdog New Year and Boys in the Hood is us. We are white people suck our dicks. I did this show uh, on MTV once, and um, MTV's great. They let us do the show and let us make it awesome however we wanted, and creatively, they were so awesome, and it was so cool. However, I gotta say, some of the shows on the network, not really my cup of tea, uh, mainly because I don't like huge pieces of shit in my tea. <laughs> I was watching this dating show on there called Next. Man, if anyone here has ever been a contestant on Next, do me a favor and go away and die. Because you're a horrible person and I don't want comedy bringing any kind of satisfaction into your miserable existence. First guy that comes out, right? He's a guy going out on the dates. And he comes up there and he says this. He goes, yo, this girl better be pretty because if she's a pain in the ass, I'm going to need something cute to look at. And I was stunned that he could say that. That's so offensive. And at the same time, on my show, they didn't want us to say that a character was raped by a dinosaur. <laughs> raped by a dinosaur! Because that's too offensive. Oh, I guess I didn't want all these angry letters from paleontologists who were like, Hey man, this doesn't have fossil records to suggest that kind of behavior. So why don't you chill with your accusations? <laughs> and then after you meet this dude, then you meet the girls he's going out on the dates with. And they come up there and they say things like, if he has a neck tattoo, I'm gonna lick it. <laughs> it's like, whoa, how sweaty can you be in five seconds? And after they say that, they freeze. And like three facts about him pop up on the left side. And the first two facts are always really normal. But the third fact always comes way out of left field. It's always like, Monica's 22, she's a hairdresser in Hollywood, and she hates purple gift wrap. <laughs> like, how does that define her as a person? And the whole show just bummed me out, man, because the things they try to keep off TV are just like really explicit sex or violence and no one cares about their kids seeing attitudes like that on TV and that's way worse to me like I'd much rather have a daughter that grew up and shot me in the leg and burned my house down than some really slutty girl that hates the sound of people eating bananas <laughs> my favorite third fact I ever saw on next though was this one guy named Clarence his third fact was that he hates the phrase Riverview you didn't mishear me when the words river and view start coming together. Clarence is like, hold up, don't do that! <laughs> I was like, what would make a man hate the phrase river view? And I could only think of one scenario, and it's terrible, but I have to share it with you. <laughs> so one day, this guy Clarence is coming home, right? And he's walking down a dark alley, and he gets jumped by this motorcycle gang. And they just start raping him, right? <laughs> and all he can see is a sign that says river view. And these guys just like, say it, Clarence, say it! He's like, river view, river view, river view, river view, river view, river view, river view. So yeah, if you were raped by the Riverview Rape Gang, sure, hate the phrase Riverview. Otherwise, just stop looking at property in that area. I think you notice something really weird about me when I do that bit, and that is that I'm a very lazy rapist. I just bend my knees a little bit, very low impacts. Anybody that's worried about getting raped by me after the show is like, man, it's not going to be that bad. I got raped by Aziz after the show last night. That was pretty refreshing. I met this guy when I was back home last time who was a doctor, and he moved from some country in Asia to Alabama. And I was like, man, out of all the states in the country, why would you choose Alabama? And he goes, oh, well, I don't have my green card yet, so if I work in a place that's underserved, like Alabama, they'll give me a waiver. I was like, whoa, that's kind of a weird deal. The government's like, oh, yeah, you can come to the United States. Come on, come on, yeah, you, come on, come on, come on. But you got to go to Alabama. <laughs> It's kind of like a girl going, yeah, you can see me naked, but you can only look at my left elbow. And my left elbow's racist. <laughs> I like living in L.A. One thing I don't like about living here is driving. I always get bored when I'm driving. And when I get bored, I go on the Internet on my BlackBerry. So I'm going to die. <laughs> and whenever they go through the records, they'll find my phone and be like, whoa, that's what he looked up right before he died? It'd be so sad. It'd be like, comedian Aziz Ansari was killed in a car accident today. He was struck by another vehicle while using IMDB to see if Val Kilmer was indeed in the film Willow. <laughs> Representatives for Mr. Kilmer confirm he was indeed in the film and hopes this will prevent future tragedies of this nature. <laughs> this is the third Willow-related death this year. <laughs> comedian Aziz Ansari was killed in a car accident today. 
He was struck by another vehicle while checking showtimes for Up on Fandango. <laughs> he just purchased a single ticket for a four o'clock show at a $2 theater in order to live out the saddest afternoon of all time. <laughs> Comedy bad boy Aziz Ansari, a.k.a. comedy heartthrob Aziz Ansari, was killed in an awful automobile accident today. He was struck by another vehicle while Googling his own name. <laughs> I do do that, man. It's hard not to. Everyone I know, they Google their name, see what people write, and it's so funny to read it because people always think, like, oh, man, there's no way he'd have time to ever read this. <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't do anything. I take naps all day. And... I read this one time, this girl, like, had written about, like, how she had a celebrity crush on me. And it's funny, because you never thought in a million years that I'd read that. You know, never in a million years would I read that. But I did. <laughs> so one day, I'm just going to email her and be like, Hey, it's me, Aziz. I heard you have a celebrity crush on me. I'm a lot lonelier than you think I am. <laughs> Where's your house? I will come to the house. I love performing at music festivals. That's always fun. I did this festival called Bonnaroo, and it's really cool because they have like indie rock stuff and like hippie stuff coming together. Like they had this weird hippie thing there called the Sonic Forest, and that was basically they had these poles set up, and you'd slap the sides of the poles, and all these bells and whistles and lights would go off, and they had like 30 of them in one little area. I was like, that's the Sonic Forest. I was like, damn, how dumb are those hippies to be entertained by something so stupid? <laughs> And then the last day I was there, I ate mushrooms. And then I was like, Sonic Forest, I totally get you now. And I slapped the shit out of those poles for like four hours. Because the Sonic Forest is the greatest idea ever. I did a festival uh, in Telluride, Colorado once. It was a ski town. Not a lot of minorities there. And I was talking to this dude, and he was like, yo, man, before you go, I got to ask you one thing. Where are you from? And I went, well, I'm from South Carolina, but my parents are from India. And he went, what? <laughs> but you talk exactly like I do. And I was like, well, I mean, here's the thing, man. There's a lot of people that come here from other countries, and, you know, they have children here, they grow up in the society, and sometimes they don't have accents. They're called immigrants. <laughs> and then I showed him a video of an Asian kid rapping, and his head exploded. <laughs> I went to a place recently I think is one of the most fucked up places I've ever been to. I'm convinced this place is the epitome of American excess, of American greed. I'm talking about a place called Cold Stone Creamery. <laughs> Whoa. If you have not been there, the basic gist of Cold Stone is that they take ice cream and then they just go ape shit with it. There's like slamming brownies and gummy bears and just hammering it in there. Whatever fat people want in there. Snickers bar, cheeseburger. Let me fuck a Butterfinger into it for you. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jesus. This is way too intense for me. Is that guy's dick a Butterfinger? What just happened? Whoa, 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 I think I'll just have a small cup of vanilla if that's okay. This is just too intense for me. The lady behind the counter's like, no, 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 you should try one of our creations, like birthday cake remix, where we take cake batter ice cream, yellow cake, fudge, you know, sprinkles. I'm like, you know, I'm, that just sounds too intense for me. I'll just have a small cup of vanilla. She goes, quit being a bitch. Whoa. And then I couldn't even get a small because their sizes are actually like it, love it, and gotta have it. What kind of crackhead terminology is that? Hey, what size you want, man? I don't know, man. I just gotta have it. Put some ice cream in a cup. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. And, you know, I felt bad for people that had to work there, man. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna drop a couple of dollars in the tip jar on my way out. Whoa, that's when all hell broke loose. Because apparently, whenever they get even a dollar in the tip jar, all five employees are required to bump out into a song and dance number where they take current popular music and shove Cold Stone lingo into it as if they're some retarded second cousin to Weird Al that's obsessed with ice cream. And it's ridiculous. Five people are singing and dancing for a dollar. That's 20 cents a person. If you saw a homeless dude outside of Cold Stone, you're like, hey, man, I'll give you 20 cents to sing some songs about Cold Stone. he go, hey, man, go fuck yourself. That's degrading. One thing that's cool about doing those music festivals is, um, you know, you get to meet musicians and stuff, like, uh, you're a fan of, and, you know, that's always cool for me, like, I met M.I.A. once, and um, I was like, man, I gotta say something cool to M.I.A., she's so cool. I was like, this is what I'll do, I'll say something in Tamil, this obscure Southeast Asian language that we both happen to speak. Here's the thing, I don't speak Tamil that well. Like, I would never say something like this, but if I want to say, you have beautiful breasts, I couldn't say that. What I have to say is, Monica Inga Ramalanakana, which translates to, for you, right here, it's awesome. <laughs> Which is a terrible line.
one time in LA, Kanye West came to one of my shows, and I was so psyched. I'm such a huge Kanye West fan, and everything he did to me was so funny. Like, he was in the bathroom for like a really long time, and then he came out and goes, yo, just so you know, I was on an important phone call. I wasn't taking a shit. <laughs> but um, when he was leaving, he was like, yo, man, we should hang out sometime. That'd be cool, right? And I was like, yeah, that'd be crazy. I'm supposed to use a band. It'd be awesome. So this is the story of the first time I hung out with Kanye West. <laughs> so he texts me. He's like, yo, we're at this club. Come down. So I grab my friend Jason, who's another guy that does not look like he belonged in a hip-hop nightclub. <laughs> and we head over there, right? And we get there, we get in the club. And uh, they're like, uh, yo, we're at capacity. I was like, well, Kanye West told me to come down. And he's like, somebody's going to have to come and get you. <laughs> <laughs> so I texted Kanye, I was like, hey man, like, they're at capacity, they said someone needs to get me. And then before I could even hit send, I get a text from him, on my way. <laughs> he comes out, he's like, and I, we go in, it's really cool of him to come get us, and we go inside, and like, he's sitting there at a table with like, Jay-Z and all these models and stuff, and like, we just did not belong there. Like, if you had a photo of that table, you'd be like, who photoshopped those two dudes in there? <laughs> that was a really good job! And, you know, Jay-Z's there drinking vodka, he makes... Like, how baller is that? Jay-Z signed the tab, money went back into his own pocket. He was like, you're crazy for this one, Jay. Ho! <laughs> and so Kanye eventually goes, yo, man, we're heading back to the crib. You want to come down? I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. It'd be crazy to see your house. And so we go down there, me and Jason, and we get there pretty early. And there's no one really there. And I walk in, and I hear 808s and Heartbreak playing, which is his album. And I walk up, I see him sitting on the couch, he's like... Shh. I was like, yo, man, are you listening to your own album in your own house, bopping your own head? And he goes, yeah, these beats are dope. And I go, that'd be like if I had a stand-up album, you came over to my house and I was listening to it going, ha, 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 ha. these jokes are dope. And we're sitting there hanging out at his house, and, like, everything that Kanye said to me made me laugh so hard. Like, at one point, we were, like, sitting there talking about music, like, talking about TV on the radio or something. And, like, he was, like, cut me off. He's like, yo, man, hold on a second. And he said the greatest thing I will ever hear in my life. He goes, hold on a second. I'm going to go over there and look in the telescope with this girl with the big titties. <laughs> and then uh, later on, you know, he was talking about coming to my show, and he's like, man. A good time at your show and it's like oh thank you for coming you know and he's like yo man you know what you need to do tonight you need to do some of your jokes and i was like oh man you know what i need to do tonight not do that <laughs> but he kept bringing it up he's like come on man please it'd be really cool if you did some jokes man it'd be really cool and eventually i had a couple more drinks he's like fuck it i'll do some jokes <laughs> and next thing you know like my friend jason's in the living room like this next comedian coming to the stage <laughs> and like i come up to the living room and like he's got like 30 people arranged in his living room and i'm like telling my jokes and this is a nightmare situation for a comedian. But everyone was very quiet and nice. They listened, they laughed, and it was great. But my favorite part was every now and then, someone would be in the kitchen, like, making a drink or something like that, and they'd make a little noise, and then Kanye would jump up and be like, Yo! Shut the fuck up! Homie's over here trying to tell some jokes! <laughs> Which is the best thing anyone's ever yelled at a comedy show. <laughs> my cousin Darwish, who is Harris's older brother, actually got into a little bit of a tiff with Kanye. And, you know, Darwish is, like, 18 years old, so he just started listening to music. And um, he would always IM me about new bands he'd heard of or whatever. And one time he's like, Aziz, have you ever heard of Kanye West? That song Amazing? It's amazing. And he's like, are there any other good rappers I should listen to? I was like, oh, you ever listen to any Wu-Tang Clan? He's like, no, but I've heard of him. He raps a lot about karate, right? And I was like, not exactly. And so I copied that conversation and emailed it to Kanye. And uh, he responded back right away. He goes, wow, new fans, yay, more people that don't hate me. <laughs> That's how his emails sound to me. And, and then a little bit later, I get another I am for Darwish. He's like, Aziz, that Kanye song, Flashing Lights, that's a ripoff of a Neo track. Kanye stole that beat. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, what's Kanye's email? <laughs> and I was like, you're really going to email him? And he goes, I don't know. It's pretty messed up. <laughs> and I was like, I'll email him for you. And so I sent that conversation to him. I was like, oh, shit. Darsh is accusing you of jacking beats, homie. <laughs> and then he responds back right away. He goes, no. Bustle came out afterwards. 
And I showed that to Darwish, and, you know, Darwish apologized, and, you know, I just pasted all those conversations on my website. And then the next day, I went on Kanye's blog, and I saw this. That's my cousin Darwish! <laughs> Kanye West versus Darwish! So, I called up Darwish, and I'm like, hey, Darwish, have you been on Kanye's website before? He's like, no, he's got a website? Keep in mind, Darwish is, like, the hugest Kanye West fan right now. And I was like, have you been on his website? He's like, no. I was like, go on there right now. He goes on there and goes, what? I gotta go change my Facebook status, click. <laughs> Maybe my favorite musician that I've ever met was uh, R. Kelly, I think. And um, in case you're not familiar, R. Kelly is a brilliant R&B singer slash crazy person. <laughs> like, they did an interview with him on BET, right? And the guy doing the interview was probably a guy like me, you know, huge fan of R. Kelly and his music and hopes he really is innocent of those terrible things he's accused of. So first question the guy goes, now Robert, are you attracted to teenage girls? And R. Kelly, you know, if you're R. Kelly, that's easy, right? All you gotta do is be like, no, not at all, no, that's all you gotta do, right? That's all you gotta do. That is not what R. Kelly does. <laughs> R. Kelly goes, define teenage. <laughs> Literally the worst answer. The only worst answer would have been he went, ha, yeah. And then, so that's the person we're dealing with. So I go to his concert with my friend Jason. We get there, show's sold out. People are psyched for R. Kelly. Jason looks over at me and goes, Hey, Aziz, me and you are the only two white people at this concert. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, Jason, I'm not white. Second of all, you're the only white guy at this concert. <laughs> we might kill you, Jason. <laughs> so the concert starts, and it's incredible. R. Kelly is the best showman. Like, he has his part in the show where he has sex with an invisible woman. You can see the sound effects. So it's like, take it off her blouse. <laughs> and then when he does that, a spotlight shoots out of his cock and goes over the whole audience like he's coming on the whole crowd. And then a spotlight hits the screen and the screen explodes. And I was like, whoa, you are not going to see shit like that at a Modest Mouse concert. Wow. And then, like, there's all this other weird stuff. Like, at one point, he leaves the stage, right? And they cut to a video of him playing basketball with his friends. It lasts about four minutes. Comes back on stage. Goes to the next song. Doesn't address why I showed that video. You can't do shit like that. I can't leave the stage, show you some video of me playing foosball with my buddies, and then come back and be like, man, I pulled you crazy. You'd be like, yo, man, what's up with that video you showed? You gotta explain that shit. That was weird. Then, you know, we go backstage and meet him at the end of the show. He's very nice. He's like, hey, you guys should come to this after party we're doing. And uh, I was like, yeah, sure. And so we go to this nightclub. And uh, once again, Jason and I are the only two white people there. And <laughs> when people know R. Kelly's at a nightclub, they lose their shit. And then he took the stage and people went nuts. And he started doing that song. It's like, I'm in love with a stripper. And he's doing a song. And at one point, this woman just jumps on stage and starts giving him a lap dance. She finishes the lap dance. And R. Kelly goes... Who can top that shit? 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 Second woman comes on stage, gives him an even crazier lap dance. And R. Kelly goes, Who can top that shit? Who can top that shit? Who can top that shit? Third woman comes on stage with humongous breasts, whips him out, slaps the first three rows, grabs R. Kelly's head and just goes, Aah! And R. Kelly pops out his head and goes, Whoa, ain't nobody gonna top that shit. I'm out. And he leaves. And I was like, whoa, what a performance. <laughs> but my favorite, my absolute favorite part of the R. Kelly show was like 20 minutes in, he stops everything. And he starts talking to the crowd. And what's great about that is that R. Kelly does not talk like you and I talk. He talks like R. Kelly talks. <laughs> so he goes like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know the name of this building, <laughs> but the people that run this building they said Robert, uh, they said Robert, uh, they said Robert, you've been only doing your show for 20 minutes and it's already getting too freaky tonight. <laughs> they said Robert, they said motherfucking Robert, <laughs> there will be no touching of yourself in this area tonight. Do you want to know what I told them? I said, L.A., do you want to know what I told him? I said, L.A., do you want to know what I said to these people when they said that to me? Do you want to know what I 
do uh it's something a little different um i played a character in this movie funny people uh named randy who is a stand-up comedian and when i did the movie i wrote like some jokes for randy and i enjoyed doing them and so i thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of randy in the special so uh we're gonna do a little bit where it's basically like what would randy do if he had a special so give me a second i'll be right back <laughs> 